So as with anything artistic or figurative or "cg" it pays to have some familiarity with the thing that it is that you are actually trying to replicate. As such, something important to make at least a cursory study of is going to be the structure of the face itself. Now, since we are going to be building a bone based rig, which is kind of like a little machine, you know, it's these bones, these pieces that, you know, stretch and rotate and hinge and so on then it seems to make perfect sense that a good place to start exploring is going to be with the musculature of the face. And we might be given to think that really what we want to sort of create in the structure and the layout of our bones is something that broadly mimics and matches the kind of musculature that we find in the face. And if you're experimenting and trying things out and you want to try different structures, that's certainly something to look at. But what you will ultimately find is that there are some areas of the face where we do want to do that and others where we don't, or where we want to create slight differences or deviations. A good example is along here, from the nose to the side of the mouth. We should all be quite familiar with this, you know, bulge, this curve, this crease that runs off the nose and comes across the side of the mouth, the nasolabial fold. But if we look at the way that the musculature of the face is structured, we don't see such a direct link to it. We have this muscle coming off the nose here that attaches below the nose and when it's pulled, that pulls the upper lip up. We have this one coming off the cheekbone at this sort of angle that also pulls the lip up and out. We've got muscles over here that pull the lip laterally outwards across the main flat of the cheek but we don't have much of a muscle line running round there that's doing the pulling. You see that shape that we see on the surface of the face is really just the surface result of what's going on underneath. For instance when that forms you know we're normally doing a smile or you know an E or something similar. As such when we smile you know our lip goes out and it comes up we're getting pull on this muscle, we're getting pull on that one, we're getting pull from all these sorts of directions. As a result, the skin and the fat that sits on top of these muscles just gets bunched. Just like a piece of cloth, essentially, it just bunches up. But of course, what we are trying to create is that bunching shape. Unless we've got some, you know, very high spec muscle and tissue system with which to deform our mesh, then we don't strictly want to follow the lines of the musculature for producing that shape. Rather, we want to follow the lines and contours of the skin shape, because ultimately that is what we are trying to manipulate and control and deform, is the top level surface skin. Of course, in other places, this is much more direct, for instance, on the forehead here. As you can see, the muscles that run off the brow and over the top of the skull are just running straight up. Of course, when we lift our brow, our forehead just goes up. It wrinkles across, of course, which is the skin and so on bunching again. But the actual action of movement is pretty much straight up and over. So there we'll want a structure that more or less mimics this kind of muscle flow. Lastly, there are other things that we can learn from the musculature by looking at it critically and it can start to give us clues about little things that are happening in the face that we might not ordinarily notice. For instance look here at the depressor labii inferioris on the left and right hand sides. You see that they pull down here at roughly a 45 degree angle in each direction. Now these muscles are what pull the lower lip down. When you drop your lower lip, exposing your lower teeth, you are activating these two muscles here. There isn't a muscle that runs straight down the middle. One does not exist. As such, when you pull your lip straight down, what you're actually doing is activating both of these muscles. Like any muscle, they contract and they bulge. And if you put your finger roughly, you know, where the end of this line is on either side, if you place your fingers there and you pull your lip straight down, just, you know, dip your lip down and expose your teeth, you can feel the muscle bulging at these points under the skin. But of course you feel no bulge if you put your finger in the middle here. This gives us clues to a little deformation that we might like to add in, especially on more realistic characters. This might be something that we build in a controller for so that when posing the face, you can just pull that little bump out. But more than likely, that's something that we'll want to automate. 
as it is impossible to pull your lip down without using these muscles, and so therefore if we are going to include little deformations like that we would link them to the action of the lip controls themselves. we find a similar thing in this little loop muscle you see that comes here over the cheek and then up over the top of the lip the rosorius when this muscle pulls if you think about it of course you know the muscle pulls and tightens it shortens this helps to force the upper lip down and again if you put your fingers just here in the midpoint of your cheeks and you push down your lower lip you force your lip down so as it covers your upper teeth you can feel a little bulge occurring there which is this muscle pulling so a bit of study and thought about this can help you to produce more realistic faces it can help instruct you to see how you want to lay your bones out by looking at the structure of the muscle you can see the areas where the flow of the muscle fiber matches the movement of the skin you can identify the deformations that are taking place in the skin that don't have a direct single muscle link thus discovering that you want to set up some sort of you know shape control for those and you can also find the little details of subtle deformation that will be produced in the skin by the action of all this stuff going on beneath it of course another highly important thing for any kind of rigging is going to be the mesh itself how the topology and the lines and so on are laid out for us trying to do a good deformation on a face with a bad mesh is going to be exceedingly difficult if not impossible and generally what we look for are those same sorts of shapes we're looking to replicate the shapes that we see the surface skin taking rather than specifically that which we see the underlying muscle laid out in and so we go for a mesh that has a good series of clear lines that fleshes out the major shapes for us such as the nasolabial fold the loops that run around the mouth the direction of movement in the forehead and of course across the brows and of course we look at the way that these major lines and loops link and feed into one another where their you know major crossover points are where their little you know hinges and links exist as we move out of one looping moving shape and into another as well as of course where the lines will run off in the opposing direction you can essentially think of it as a big circle here around the mouth circle around each eye but then also viewed from the side as circles extend backwards across here and intermix from across there and of course even though in this training we'll, we'll be focusing on human faces all of these same lessons and indeed much of the structure that we'll see in the rigs will go for the faces of other types of creature as well you can see of course that much of the muscle structure is exceedingly similar here we see the forehead muscle pulling up there coming from the eyebrow the loop around the eye the nasolabial muscle that comes here again off the strip of nose bone and leading down toward the upper lip the rings of muscle that come around the lip itself the muscle pulling the lip back against the cheekbone essentially when you are trying to do a head or a face like this it is exceedingly similar to the way that we would do a human face it's largely just stretched forwards and although of course you know there might be all sorts of weird and wonderful design faces for aliens or imaginary creatures if we exclude the peculiarity of insects and their weird structures we will find that largely in the animal kingdom all creatures share this very similar layout and chiefly there are only two primary face types there is the flat face which you see on humans and apes and cats and bats and there is the elongated face that you see on dogs and horses and hippopotamuses and so on so get yourself a good feeling and a good basic idea of the structure of the face and of course its major shapes that you see on the surface where are the folds where are the creases where are the lumps these are the shapes that you're going to need to be moving around with your rig and as such you will see that we design our rig to fit this shape and manipulate 
that shape properly.